Hello everybody and welcome back. Elon Musk is hyping Tesla's upcoming battery day, saying that it will be one of the most exciting days in Tesla's history and hinting at the upcoming Terra factory announcement. With legacy automakers struggling to create Giga factories, it's becoming clear that the gap between Tesla and legacy automakers is still continuing to widen. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy through increasingly affordable electric vehicles and energy products. Thus, Gigafactory is born out of necessity to achieve this goal. It is created to supply enough batteries to support Tesla's projected vehicle demand. Therefore, it is important to have basic idea about Gigafactory before understanding Terra factories. The name Gigafactory comes from the word Giga, the unit of measurement representing billions, which means that Gigafactory are factories that produce billions of watt hour in battery capacity. Tesla's first Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada has a production capacity of 35 gigawatt hours and is the highest volume battery plant in the world. In hindsight, this may seem like a large amount. However, in Tesla's Q1 2020 conference call, Elon Musk has recently hinted at upcoming Terra Factory. Let's hear the clip. So, add that uh, our gigas have gotten bigger. Yes. And uh, well, we arguably could be start being called Terra. Yes. Uh, with multiple products as well. So I believe we will see Tesla's plans to produce over 1 terawatt hour of battery cells announced at the Battery Investor Day. A terawatt hour is a unit which translates to 1000 gigawatt hours, in amount that is over 28 times larger than Tesla's Giga Nevada. Therefore, in this video, we'll take a closer look at how can Tesla reach terawatt hours of production capacity with the upcoming Terra factory. Also real quick, I would really appreciate an early thumbs up as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and these videos do take really long time to make. Thank you and let's dive right in. When Tesla first unveiled the Gigafactory, Elon Musk stated that they only need 100 Gigafactories to transition the world to being electric. Let's hear this clip. We actually did the calculations to say like, what would it take to transition the whole world to uh, sustainable energy? What kind of throughput would you actually need? Um, and you need 100 Gigafactories. Of course, this includes other companies' Gigafactories as well. But even with Tesla creating a new Gigafactory every year or two, it would still take decades for Tesla to achieve this goal. So obviously it makes sense for Tesla to create Terra factories instead of Giga factories. But Tesla can't simply just build a building and call it a Terra factory and suddenly have the capacity that it needs. It is clearly a complex process with manufacturing equipment that is required as well as raw materials needed for batteries. But if you are Tesla then it can be done in a number of ways. Let's see some of the ways that Tesla could upgrade their existing Giga factory into Terra factory. 1. Increase in production capacity. Gigafactory 1 in Reno, Nevada has a production capacity of 35 gigawatt hours. It means that in one year, the total number of battery produced will have the combined battery capacity of 35 gigawatt hours. If Tesla were to increase the number of batteries produced by the factor of 30, that is without any improvement in energy density or other aspects of the battery, then Tesla can reach terawatt hour of cell capacity. In other words, Tesla would have upgraded the Giga Nevada into Terra Nevada. Remember Tesla acquired two battery companies Maxwell and Hybar? These guys are expert at battery manufacturing technology. Maxwell Technologies was acquired primarily for this cheaper, super fast manufacturing technology and Maxwell claims it to be 16 times increase in production capacity. Which means that we can make 16 times more number of batteries in the same time period. And Hybar was acquired for this super fast electrolyte filling technology which increases the overall rate of production. With the combination of these two technologies, Tesla can pump out way more batteries at incredible rates which wasn't possible before. So if you want a more in-depth explanation, then you can watch this video where we cover all the major improvements of Maxwell dry electrode manufacturing process. 2. Increase in energy density. Today's Tesla Model 3 2170 battery cells have about 250 watt hour of energy per kilogram. So in gravimetric terms, this literally means that there is only 250 watt hours of energy in a single kilogram of mass. But Tesla's upcoming Terra factory will ultimately utilize this new technology achieved in Tesla's secret project codenamed Roadrunner that looks to bring the energy density from 250 watt hours per kilogram to at least 300 watt hours per kilogram. That would make the standard range Model 3 go from 250 miles to 300 miles. A denser battery would solve many range and weight issues of Tesla Semi and Cybertruck. Also, if Tesla factory simply upgraded more energy dense batteries, the factory size wouldn't change but Tesla would be a lot closer to terawatt hour number. If you'd like to know more about Tesla's battery breakthrough technologies, then you can watch this video. 3. Removing manufacturing steps By using Maxwell dry electrode technology, Tesla can get rid of the additive and toxic solvent used in today's battery. It also gets rid of this drying phase and calendaring process needed to make batteries. 
So by removing these expensive and time-consuming steps in manufacturing process, Tesla can increase the production rate of batteries. Also, the cell to pack technology removes module assembly and module testing steps in manufacturing process, which makes the manufacturing process way faster. So over time, Tesla could boost efficiencies in all of these areas to drastically increase the number of watt hours that a new factory would produce, which means Giga factories can grow physically and technologically into becoming a Terra factory. But does Tesla need a Terra factory? Yes, Tesla needs almost every lithium ion battery in the world to scale up production. Tesla's upcoming Roadster, Cybertruck, Semi require way more battery in comparison to Model 3 or Model Y. Tesla has had to continuously push back these projects and the main reason is due to lack of batteries. Cybertruck will be a higher volume than people think. Tesla has over 600,000 pre-orders for this vehicle and the number one competitor Ford sold 900,000 light trucks in United States alone in 2019. So the Cybertruck does have a very large market to go after. Additionally, about 80% of the Cybertruck pre-orders wait for the dual or triple motor versions. The tri-motor version having 500 miles of range is going to need way more kilowatt hours than a Model Y. Tesla Roadster on the other hand is an expensive high-end low volume vehicle which still packs a 200 kilowatt hour of battery that is almost triple the size of Model 3 battery. Finally, there is Tesla Semi which has been delayed to 2021 due to the global health crisis. But again, Tesla does not have enough batteries to produce this thing at scale. The Semi will have 300 miles and 500 miles and could have a total weight plus load of 80,000 pounds. So in order to achieve this range, it's going to need way more batteries. Probably a lot more than even a Cybertruck. If Tesla uses a megawatt hour or 1000 kilowatt hour battery, then a Terra factory would only allow Tesla to produce a million Semis per year and nothing else. So Tesla may in fact need more Terra factories. Also, Tesla's energy division has been held back due to the shortage of battery production at Giga Factories. It is quite clear that Tesla is hungry for more batteries and a Terra factory will solve this problem for them. But even with all of these technological breakthroughs, there is still one big problem that Tesla needs to solve. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, raw materials. Even if Tesla has the technology to produce a terawatt hour in cell capacity, lack of raw materials wouldn't allow them to reach their full potential. But there are many lithium deposits that can be mined in the United States and in order to meet the demand, Tesla has to acquire or start their own mining company. Elon Musk's boring company would definitely play a major role if Tesla were to mine lithium hydroxide. Um, now my question is, um, will there be enough, is there enough lithium supply in the world to enable you to build everything that you ambitiously want to build in the next few years at an affordable price? I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the nice thing about lithium is it's extremely abundant on Earth. Um, I mean, lithium is the third most common element in the universe. Um, and I mean, the reason we don't have just free hydrogen available is because it's bound up in water. Um, and then the reason we don't have a lot of helium is because it floats away. Uh, but, um, but lithium does not float away. And, um, and so it is, it, there's lithium in, in salt form virtually everywhere. Um, and so that there is definitely no supply issues with lithium. Um, but to get to the, the nuances of the question which you're probably aiming for, which is like in, in the time frame available, like in the next year or two years, will there be lithium in the form that, um, that, that Tesla needs, which is lithium hydroxide, um, in sufficient quantities at a price that is reasonable and does not materially affect the cost of the Model 3? Um, JB. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Um, the, uh, I mean, you're, you're, it's exactly right. I mean, we need to make sure that we have the, the extraction and processing um, capacity, but it's, it's not that much different than, than lining up other supply chain elements or components even for the car. It just has a little bit longer lead time. And you know, Tesla has spent a lot of time working with all the different lithium uh, companies, all the way from tiny startups up to the, the sort of large name lithium companies all around the world. And we're working with them to figure out what are the most economical and efficient ways to either have them invest or, or um, you know, perhaps even have us be involved uh, to make sure that they're investing on the right timeline to have the capacity ready when we need it. And 
We're also finding ways to potentially even reduce the, the cost here below what people had done in the past. Because a little bit like with batteries in the Gigafactory, you know, lithium is not a mature market. It's not traded on the London Metal Exchange. It's, it's subject to a lot of speculation right now. And you know, there, there's you know, kind of lithium booms that happen in different parts of the world. This does not relate to the actual cost of production of lithium. You know, that is relatively stable. And as Elon said, there's a lot of it. So, you know, once we can, you know, appropriately invest in the re extraction, refining, processing, you know, the price of lithium is quite low and quite stable. In summary, Tesla will require our Terra factory to meet the demand for all of their existing and upcoming vehicles along with Tesla Energy. Tesla already has a technology to convert a Gigafactory into a Terra factory. And the only limiting factor is raw materials like lithium, nickel, and so on. Well, that was it for today's video. If you're still watching, you're awesome. Have a nice day and I'll see you again in the next one. Peace.